This one is for Love and Monsters. It is. This one here is a post-apocalyptic survival film, and it stars Dylan O'Brien. So seven years after he had to go underground with this colony, he, he decides enough is enough. He has to kind of go out on a dangerous adventure to find his high school sweetheart, who is 85 miles away from where his colony is located. So he goes out, and he's not the best with weapons and he doesn't do good in fighting scenarios, but, but that pull to find her again is strong enough that he's going to risk his life to find her. Matt, did you like it? I did. Yeah. I, I did like it. Feeling you would. Yeah. Uh, it's, this is the upgrade. I like, this is weird to me. It's also gateway horror, but it's an upgrade yeah. for babysitters. So now we're going to like the YA level. So now <laughs> we're on a level of, it's this weird mishmash of like fantastic beasts and just a straight up survival horror story. And Dylan O'Brien is just really too charismatic to mm -hmm. not make this work. And that's, it's, yeah. it's largely Dylan O'Brien and a dog. And when I say oh, that it is probably good. the best chemistry, it, the chemistry between them is better than most like actor, actor chemistry of the year. There's yeah. a whole scene where it's like five minutes and it's just Dylan O'Brien talking to a dog and it is tremendous. Isn't that scene in particular? It's so incredible? good. It's so I, good. I really can't get over how good Dylan O'Brien is. It's like we've had a good deal of proof over the years, but I feel like this movie, maybe even more so than any I've seen. So I'm thinking back to, yeah. to something like Maze Runner, and I knew he was a lead then, but he also had a very, very strong ensemble around him. And he does here too, but I feel like this movie rests on his shoulders a lot more than that one did. And when you see what he can do just commanding the screen and making you believe a pretty serious arc for that character. And that character starts one way and ends another, and that is a big leap to make in, like, what is this, an hour and 45 minutes or something? Yeah, but he yeah, manages not even. to pull it off. And, it, like, no joke about that dog. That dog, so it, it's not even just about, like, oh, cute dog. Like, I know, yeah, I know exactly. all that. Performance-wise, performance-wise. Those animal trainers... All the applause to them all day long. That might be one of the best pet performances I think I've ever yeah. seen on screen. And when you when you watch it, you'll know. It, there's just these moments where I don't know how it's so well behaved and taking cues in the way that the slightest miscue would derail the whole scene. Mm -hmm. And it's not just little cutaways. Like the dog is on camera the whole time. Yeah, I'm doing a great job. But I think. Getting past the dog aspect, which is very important. Don't get me wrong. Also, the dog's fine. Just don't worry about it. The dog, you don't have to worry about anything. It's a good story for the dog. Um, the world building, I was really into. And I get nervous when things are heavy CGI and we're talking about big old monsters and things of this nature. And the creativity and the design aspects they bring to these creatures that are essentially uh, an asteroid is destroyed by or humans by nuking it to crap. And all the radiation falls back down on Earth. So all the monsters are like insects and vermin that have been altered and mutated by the radiation and basically take over the world. So you're getting giant centipedes, giant fire ants, all these crazy things that look awesome. Like it looks visually stunning. They, it did look really good. And that was another thing that caught me by surprise, because that's the type of thing that it's very easy to fall into that trap of looking so totally nice. fake, green screen backgrounds, all that nonsense that just like takes you out of the movie. But I feel like the overall style of the film and especially the pops of color that are infused throughout the entire thing just lent itself to making those visuals work really well, too. And the design of those creatures in general, they were just they they were truly fun to look at and fun to learn about. And I like yeah. the conversations about them too. And this this kind of paves the way to some of the supporting cast here. So there's a bit that I loved the most with Ariana Greenblatt and Michael Rooker. And it is, it's very zombie land. But I yeah. think they're they're purposely playing into it very, very heavily. And I do think that Michael Rooker and Ariana Greenblatt, and Ariana Greenblatt, by the way, that she is she gonna blow up. 
Watch, watch her. Oh, she's very, very good. She. I also said a similar thing about her after seeing uh, the one and only Ivan. She's very good and very naturally talented. But the two of them and they're back and forth. And then when you add Dylan O'Brien to the mix, I could have watched an entire feature film with the three of them. But I do understand why it was important for Joel to have his own journey to a degree. Here's my only wishy-washy point. I feel like there aren't that many stakes in this film. I feel like we always know Joel's going to be okay in every scene. They do nothing to make me think that Joel is in danger, even though he is encountering monsters and having to fight mm-hmm. them. So to me, it's very quick the way, uh, just to that point, you know, Michael Rooker and uh, Greenblatt come in and then exit like just as quickly. Like they're literally just there to deliver exposition and give Joel what he needs to continue. And then they're gone. There's like, I didn't feel a super strong chemistry connection on the level that it works in the story versus like they're great on screen together. It just, everything for me moves really quickly and it moves in a way that you just know where it's going. So I never, I never felt the danger of it, which is why it's like gateway to me. It never gets to the point where you feel the fierceness of anything. You're just kind of living in this world. It's like, you're more passing through than trespassing. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of with you on some of it with, as far as their chemistry goes, I, I felt that. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's a point of their interaction where, like, I felt that concern about not getting more of them. And it played very well. Yeah. As far as the danger level goes, I do understand that. I I think that they, uh, they raise the stakes with an earlier scene in the movie to show that this threat is real. And it is borderline terrifying. There, There's a couple of visuals in, uh, in the first act that really kind of burrowed into my brain and I didn't forget them but you know I definitely didn't think that Joel was gonna die <laughs> but, it, but it, it just I, takes I, a little bit away from me I think that's the nature of the movie but I also think that I was more engrossed with Joel's journey more engrossed with Joel's journey as an individual than I was with his survival which I think ultimately might have been the point it is. No, it is. I, I understand that's the point. I just feel like that's a detraction of the film itself. I just feel like there are moments where I just don't feel as invested as I should be in these moments that I know should be like getting a rise out of me. But at the same time, it's just kind of a wishy-washy monster. Oh, there's a monster. We know Joel's going to get out of this, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but still, I agree with you because also this one was co-written by Brian Duffield, correct? Yes, it was. We yeah, are big so, Duffield fans over here. Exactly. Well, and I, I'm going to tie it to Spontaneous because what he's done twice this year is take mm-hmm. a story that is definitely on the darker side, but it's about finding hope in that. So Spontaneous is very much, we already talked about that. It's about finding hope in literally the inevitable. And I think Love and Monsters is about finding hope in the fact that kind of also the same, like people move on, people do these things where life isn't always going to be the same. And I, he's very good at that. I'm very happy that Duffield has done it. I just think like in Spontaneous, he found graver stakes where Love and Monsters, he's kind of just like, all right, we're just going to be hopeful all the time. And that's fine. I just don't think it serves the story as well as it did in Spontaneous. That's a very reasonable comparison. I definitely felt the threat of of potential immediate death in Spontaneous far more than I did in Love and Monsters. And I think that that designation suits both films well. Yeah. Dewey Dessa movie time. Dewey Dessa movie scale time. I will go first and I will get, wait, I didn't see what you did. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I'm going four Dewey's out of five on the Dewey Dessa movie scale. Wow. I really enjoyed myself. Like I, f- I feel like I needed this kind of adventure. I needed this kind of like visual stimulation and, and distraction and color and creativity. I just, I really, I, my favorite F word, I had fun with it. Um, I watched, I watched it twice, actually. I watched my screener wow. twice. And there's fun th- time to watch things twice now. <laughs> Uh, there was a reason I watched this. Okay. Usually, okay. usually when I do um, when I do long form interviews, I will find the time to watch things more than once so I could watch it for the enjoyment and for review purposes so I can like jot all my thoughts down and then I'll watch it again with like the interviewing eye to pick apart, you know, scenes that I really want to dissect and ask more about. Yeah, totally. All right. <laughs> wait, so now what did, what did, wait, wait, was it a three? It was. I'm going three again. I, th- I think it, it's good. It's good for what it does. Um, I, the stakes for me were a little 
wishy-washy on that. So that's the only thing that really knocked it down um, a, a little bit tighter. And that probably would have been like a 3.5 of four. All right. Well, there you guys go. That is our love and monsters review. And that re- review was brought to you by one of the coolest people out there. It's Billy, Billy, the king of puns, Billy. It, like Billy just makes me laugh on a freaking regular basis with those puns. I can't get enough of it. So Billy, thank you for your support. That is our review of Love and Monsters. <laughs> <laughs>